agenda. Uh, last week we got a demo from Antoine. What was yes? I don't remember. What was the demo? Generic site settings, I guess. Well, it's not a really generic site settings, it was like generic site settings deployment. Yes. Uh, cache settings from Dean and yes, SQL updates from myself. Uh, today, I, so Antoine doesn't work. Demos, topics, demos. Who has demos? Oh, I've got a demo. Good demo. On the shortcut. Oh, it's so, I was like, where is the sound coming from? I couldn't see. It's so serious, so serious, you're so loud. I'm muting you. Unmute yourself when you want to talk. Don't worry. Um, Dean, topics, I don't have. Thank you. Too much. Um, so let's see updates, 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 updates. Updates, clear filter, nope. Updates on Orchard 1, there were some lots of merges, I believe. I saw lots of builds. At least two. Okay, so update distributed block service, 9 of July, um, changes. In the locking mechanism, I think another issue. Uh, Imran already fixed something a few weeks ago, and here it was missing the monitor exit. So he added that on the one next branch. Then Hermes merged a change for the, um, the container 404 results, which means that if you are trying to access a blog post, for instance, from a blog that has been unpublished and you won't be able to see the blog post and this will work for any container blog just being uh, an example that's good um should call july 7th here short codes refactor pr merged just naming naming changes name changes you see here lowercase c uh, which means there will might there might be two new get packages, uh, one that we we will unlist once we ship the new one on the new get. Rework query filter to include list options model. Uh, this is part of the content items admin page that can be extended. So now the interface is different. and eventually we'll have an abstractions module for that. So we can put that in abstractions module. Right now we don't have an abstraction module for content management. So using the core, sorry, abstractions project, not module for content management. So it's using the dot .core, content management .core project. Updates, update docs to include shape named example. If you want to access a named shape, out of the zone. Pretty sure we had an example. No, we didn't have any example of that. It's weird. Or maybe we had some, but here it's also missing one. Templates. Okay. Maybe just in the shapes page. Media library table view new colon last modified date and time. So there is a new colon in the list of uh, media items that shows the date and time. And then you can sort by date and time, just the current page. 
So it won't sort all the pages, just the current page that you have. Because it's a client side sort. Um, generic site settings deployment step. This is what uh, Antoine demoed last week. So now there is a way to, from your startup, to say you want to generate deployment steps for your site settings, for custom site settings. And this is the code to do that. So sad there is no documentation for that. At least there are examples in the code. Default sitemap frequency hint. Okay. Upgrade NPM dependencies. Paper. Remove NPM check updates. Oh. oh. Why is that possible? Didn't we prevent that? Did I maybe remove the option? Nope. Yes. Branches. Branches. Nope. So, how did it happen? It was because while I was merging, Isham merged a PR. Yep. And uh, yeah. it results as uh, this conflict. And there was a try again? Mm. Because no. that's a bug I've, I've tweeted about. Um, if you try to squash merge a PR, and mm -hmm. then it fails for some reason, like someone already pushed something at the same time. Then it shows a try again button. And when you click try again, it's not doing a squash merge. It will do a match commit, even though we disallow it on the on the no, no, I no? Didn't, didn't push a, a try again. It was a, maybe I should have uh, undo my changes before merging. Uh, oh, you didn't use a PR mm -hmm. pushed from your Git client? Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's why, because this won't be prevented yeah. by it. Um, so migrate OpenID module to OpenID 3.0, which is still a beta, but the 3.0 beta is better in this case than a 2.x. Um, maybe it's RC actually. So I talked to Kevin. So here before 201, now 30, beta 2. Yes, beta 2. Um, might be, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. As long as it's robust, we have lots of things that are also written as beta. Like this one. Or oh, all my stuff, actually. I need to, to push it. Update, upgrade fluid core to fix a bunch of bugs that were not. Uh, merged in. Thank you, Antoine. Shortcodes dog, add your own I shortcode provider implementation. Oh, uh, link to the demo that Dean made. Okay. Merge commit, add and implement, add and implement is JSON string extension method. Is JSON string extension method. Model option is JSON. Interesting. 
Um, so I, do, I put this in last week because we've got three or four PRs sitting there that are testing whether JSON that's been supplied somewhere in the admin are, are valid or not. How? Um, oh, like it's valid JSON. It's because you expect to it to be JSON, but it's not valid. <laughs> But it, yeah, and if it's if it's not valid, I think one of them's um, on the schema for a, a query, um, for example. So this is just a check to see if it if what value has been supplied is actually correct JSON, like if it passes correctly. Um, and I felt like it was worth having a, an extension method for it because there's a few PRs sitting there that are all doing the same thing um, with no extension method, no standardized method as such. Is there a try pass? Not for JSON, no. Um, not not in the, the Newton soft library. Um, th I must admit there might be something in the um, some of the new dot near core stuff. We should um, have a look at that. Uh, so each is an extension. Okay, thank you. Then upgrade this in .net to the new version. Upgrade packages in API GraphQL. Okay. Cache debugging for dynamic cache tag helper. Okay, debug up, debug strings when the cache is used. Bootstrap select updates. Use existing fight placement delegate on dynamic parts. I saw the issue. It involved Dean and jean -Thierry, so we can trust the change. It's fine. Export content as setup recipe. Contents as setup recipe. So this is a new thing that Antoine did uh, that allows to use a checkbox when you want to export some content to remove any information that that will reuse uh, like local IDs, like you see owner, author, content item ID. If you export something, it will keep the values. But this export, you have to clean it if you want to use it in a setup. Otherwise, you will reuse the GUIDs from the content item ID or the existing author and owner. So here it's removing any, it's like personal information or state that you don't want to carry across setups. Um, so this option, when you export some content items, will remove the, um, this thing for the content items. It's not uh, thorough. Um, thorough, yeah. Uh, in the way that it won't support some uh, inner content items, but at least it's working for the main content items. I think that should be a hint. Antoine was fixing the typos from everyone else. He's also including some of their typos. Check if the disabled features have to be ignored. The disabled features. Um, you see, ignore disabled features. Okay. This is a different check. It's just when you export, so it's not related to this commit message. If you export, um, features, the features which are enabled, you can select if you want to also export which ones are disabled uh, because you might want to export the one that are disabled. So they are not enabled on the, uh, the other server. And with this checkbox, you can just include the ones that are disabled or just think about the ones that are enabled. Um, and, and, and here, check if the data should be exported as a setup recipe. If checked, you will have to manually declare variables for the content picker fields. You see all the fields and items that we can't um, process because they are recursive, and you might lose the references, or you might lose the references, then they are listed here. So it's not a ultimate solution to, 
to removing all these content item IDs, but at least the main the main content items. Um, fixed typo in SMTP settings. Okay. Import recipe from JSON. So a new view that will let you type some recipe format, some recipe JSON, and then import it, or I would say run it, so you can execute some custom recipe steps uh, from this UI. And this is this is part of which feature deployment feature. So it's enabled when you enable the deployment feature apparently by default. Yes. And it's using a permission which is import permission. Yes. Okay. The same mm -hmm. that uh, Seeing that, I'm like, has there been a week without having someone complaining that post requests don't work in Orchard when they do a REST API just because there is no anti forgery token with the post request? Sometimes, many times a week. I'm wondering if there could be a way to display an error message other than nothing, like an error happened on the server. 400 server error. That's it. When it caught me out, it caught me out about a week ago. Uh, Everyone, I spent about I spent about four hours on it, and then I realized it was anti forgery. We, there are people are creating issues and asking on the forum all the time, and it's not even Orchard Core, it's just ASP.NET, but I get it. I mean, even us, we've been bitten by that so many times. It's just an answer. The answer, the response is 400 server error. And you're like, what? It, it, <laughs> it's it, like, shouldn't, it, shouldn't the body have a an error message that says, yeah, you anti forgery? I love to, but there is nothing. So maybe we could do that, or maybe ASP.NET should do that. But. ASP.NET should do that because it does it. If you do it through the UI and you hit a controller, I think in ASP.NET MVC, uh, you get a message come back. So why don't well, you have that on the same for API? For the, guys, I see. Interesting. Interesting. I will talk to Pranav. I will ask him. Uh, maybe you are doing something wrong. I will ask him. Correct. I can see this error now. Okay. Thank you, Antoine. Nice feature. So many features. Login and registration setting reset script. Reset script. Because uh, there was a test and if there is only one line, the text was not displayed and uh, the default command was displayed instead. Okay. So this script is about executing custom script when a user account is created. So you can create custom emails and uh, usernames based on external providers. For instance, when you authenticate using uh, Google Auth, then you can decide how the local username or user account will be created using this script. There was a question this morning on um, Gitter about that. Michael is the, the best because he wrote that. So to answer the, the question. Adding reply to to email workflow display driver. Okay. Just here, just binding the interesting. I was just missing the bind. Uh, media field, fix the JS7 bindings in attach mode, the template and uh, the git message should be shorter. And if it's an issue from the PR, when we merge the PR, we should fix it. Or I will tell uh, Linus that you are writing too long git messages. Um, okay, media field, fix the JS7 binding in attach mode, template. And, There was an error when you click multiple times uh, a media. 
yeah, yeah, that's weird. These, these changes when they should be reviewed, like probably in NRO, because usually you usually don't need to add using unless you added extension methods or refactor some extension methods. So these must be some leftovers here. Um, then, because I don't see an extension method here changed. Formatting, it's kind of sad here also because either the format was completely wrong or there is too much formatting here and then we don't even know what's the change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a difficult one to review that because there's so much ah, formatting you see, changes. You but. see here and the formatting is even wrong. So, so two options, just tell them to fix the formatting or just change the file directly to remove like two issues like removing the space here where it was needed and including a space here where it was not needed and then yeah that so this is this was fine i mean why yeah so i don't know what's changed here how to say Whatever happened in this PR, I will never have merged it. Did did Dean or Gentry review that? Yeah, I, I reviewed it. it. It did fix a number of issues with the um, with having multiple fields and and the editors. Um, this one, the one looking at there, fixes an issue um, with multiple IDs showing up in the um, admin list because these, when you put two fields on a um, on a page, they they just show up twice. Uh, so yeah, I reviewed it and I felt that the the fix was valid. If we need to do things like this for a major field, pretty sure everything will need the same, I won't say hack, but the same complex code to work. I don't see why a media field would be different than a taxonomy field or media field is using a pop-up for sure, but content item. But most of it is around the localization strings, which are, are tagged by ID. Um, so, I mean, that particular bit wasn't breaking anything, um, but it still gives you errors in your, your console. Yeah, and also adding, so we do things like this in the widgets, but doing it for, ah, that scares me. It's like, I'm sure there would have been better solution to the issue, because I can tell you, this there will be more issues later that will have to be fixed with even more weird code that nobody will understand why it's there or how it works. I can feel it. <laughs> I hope it won't happen, but I can feel it. Been there. See custom, oh, media field shapes. Media field shapes, custom new shape, media field edit. Why wasn't it necessary before? Now resource wrapper, that's so... Resource wrapper for the media field. I don't even understand. I like reading the code. I don't know what it will do. I will have to dig into the code to understand what it does. Just for that's so weird. Maybe it's a good good solution, but that scares me. Like every time we display, oh, is this this? Then let's wrap it. Uh, media field edit attached. So what is an attached media field? By the way, 
attached node. Uh, that's the field where you can just attach media fields that are specific to that content item and they go in a special folder which is based on the content item ID um, so they don't kind of turn up in the um, in the general gallery. I see, yeah, yeah, okay, I see. Uh, it's like contained, okay, so I see. But okay, so there yeah, is one. I, mean, I, I kind of agree. We don't necessarily need to do all these things with um, with shapes, but that was the uh, and wrappers. That was the format that's been used on the HTML fields, um, and a lot of this PR was fixing kind of issues with with those. So you, you're quite right. Mm -hmm. um, I, we could actually rationalize a lot of that and a lot of the HTML editor um, media modal pop-up stuff. Um, I was looking at it as I was doing shortcodes, thinking it's just too complex and um, and unnecessary. And you understand that it's, it's people, so temp code, what's his name? PM, is that uh, PM, yeah. That's nice. I mean, it's some work to understand the issue, to find a fix and to implement that. Okay, that's not easy. Like all these JavaScript, these shapes and everything. The, the knowledge you need to know to be able to find a fix to that the, in this way, it's huge and the work to, to do that. And it's hard to say no, because I'm like, this dev has had to do that. And in a way you're like, okay, it's fixing things, so let's accept it. And it's better, it's better than before because there is less bugs. But is it better in 10 months when nobody understands the issue and all these changes and will change the field and then it will break this again because 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 there is a new shape type and nobody knew that you had to add the new shape type here to also add the resource wrapper there. So it's hard to say no, but sometimes we have to say no. It's, it's better, but it's not better. It's fixing an issue, but in the long term, we might we might have to pay for it even more than with the bug or with a better fix. That's hard. There was an article I think last week I, I saw, and I'm not doing any comparison, but uh, Linux was saying he was not coding at all and uh, on on Linux, on the Linux kernel, and he was saying he's just here to say no, not to say all the bad words that he's, he used to use, but just to say no. Like, no, we can't take that. We no, we don't want that. So that's hard. Sometimes we have to say no. We have, we have done that by the past. So here it's it's fixing. So, I mean, it's done. Uh, it has been reviewed. It works. But I'm sure there will be a, an easier, either an easier way to fix that or not to fix it, but maybe to go back and see why this fix had to be done this way. Maybe the first design was wrong. And why just the, f yeah, I'm sure there is some better way to to fix these kind of issues. It's not easy, but yeah. So right now it's the best fix. We'll see later. Add reference to resource tag helper projects because otherwise you can't get the tag helpers. And this one needs it now. Okay, publish later. Fix typo hierarchy. On VS Code, I enabled a plugin. I think also um, Zoltan told us we should enable it or have some PR check to do that. I enabled a plugin that will show some words that are unknown as warnings and you can add them to the dictionary or just ignore them but at least you see like squiggly when the words don't uh, fit the dictionary and if you see it in doc or in some strings you're like oh i made a typo um, disabled thank you good 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 um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No record today. Uh, what else? Topics. We said we had a demo from Dean. So please do it whenever you want. Sure.
Let me know when you can see the screen. It. Excellent. Okay, so um, Sebastian just said we, we merged one of the short code PRs um, and that PR included um, a, a library that Sebastian has written for uh, called short code. Um, so this is the, the repo for it here. Um, and this demo will be about kind of taking what we can do with that library a little bit further and um, implementing some short codes um, in the edit in the um, the admin area um, to give us something a little bit like um, what we can see in WordPress, where they've got um, pop-ups with the, the list of available short codes um, and other features. Uh, so, I've been working towards that. Um, the the first um, page I'll show you is probably a um, a little pop-up feature. Um, so when you're now in an HTML editor, you can get a little pop-up here where you have a list of the available short codes. Um, this particular one includes some arguments with it. Um, so you could specify um, a size on this particular one as well. And um, some of the other kind of hints of bits and places. I'll demo that one later. Um, this one is interesting because it um, will just style some text. I still have to decide about the capitalization um, by wrapping a span around it with a particular class that I've set. Uh, so if we publish this page, Up here, um, and we have our Ipsum. That's the small Ipsum. That's a short code that I'll, I'll demo how I've overwritten it. Um, larger Ipsum, a piece of text which is just wrapped in a, a span with a text primary class, um, and a piece of text that's written in. Um, wrapped in a secondary class. So we have that. Um, that's the little pop-up. It's um, available in a way that we can add it to uh, the, the Trumbleweg editor, um, that we can add it just to any kind of text area or input. Um, the same thing here, you just get a little pop-up. Um, you can either cancel it or Accept it. Um, so what we also have is the ability to actually write these short codes in the admin. Um, so we write them, can write them in Liquid. Um, and this is, for example, the the primary one, which is just able to test. This is just a, a, there's some options on where you can you can place the content in a short code, whether you place it um, in an, an argument or whether you place it um, in the whole code or the content area of the code. And this just returns the the content value the value wrapped in a in a span. So quite nice and simple. So the the templates themselves you can write with with Liquid, um, and they're saved in the admin. Um, and one of the features that I added, I'll just go to some code for a second here. Um, what I've done here is just, I've registered a short code um, in code. It's the, the bold short code, uh, which does this and wraps things in an EM tag. Um, but then what I've done in here is I've replaced that template um, with another bold one, which in this particular case changes the style to wrap it in, in an I. Um, just in, as, as an example of how we can um, potentially override ones that have been written in code. Um, so we've got a discovery service, um, which I'll go to the code for a second here. 
um, which when you're registering the short code allows you to describe it. Um, I'm not sure if the idea of having a hint is a good idea because we will have to think about localization on it as well, potentially. Um, this is what the short code will return uh, when you actually select it from an editor. Um, so you might have it returning something completely different. For example, um, just as a default. Um, and I also introduced the concept of categories. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I thought they might be useful. Um, we've talked a little bit about um, shortcodes potentially being a replacement for um, Orchard One tokens. Um, and I went through, I got up Orchard One the other day, and I just went through all the tokens that we have kind of out of the box. I was like, yeah, I remember this. We've got a lot of them. And you scroll down this little list, and then you scroll down, and you find the next page, and you find the next page, and you find the next page. Um, and the list is really big. And if you don't know what they are, or don't know what they, you should be using, um, it's, it can be quite complicated, particularly if you're a content editor, which is where I'm kind of seeing shortcodes more useful. Um, so the idea with applying a, um, the concept of a category is that in, in the HTML, in the field, when we say we want shortcodes, we get to say that we want shortcodes that are HTML content related shortcodes, um, rather than you know, potentially we might also, we might also have say localization shortcodes for help us there. Um, or just text content. Or other helpers that may not necessarily want to be used in an HTML editor, but um, would get used in other places. Um, so that is probably there. Yeah, that's pretty much the demo. That's what we've got at the moment. Um, there's still a few, few more features to add. Um, and this was just something I was looking at uh, for JP because he'd, he'd like to use some of them for localization, um, which means we need to raise the question of whether or not we would also process shortcodes in things like text fields. Um, at the moment, we're just processing them in HTML fields uh, because they are the only ones that require the um, the image shortcode, which was the first one that we, we introduced. Uh, so that's the demo. I shall um, hand it back. Uh, perfect, thank you. Are you using the latest version with the context? Because in the Lambda you used, no, I didn't see the context. You, you haven't merged it yet. I did, dude. When? I, I never got the notice on that. Are you sure? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay, you said it looks good. Oh, I see. I see, okay. Sorry. I saw the, con the comment, I'm like, are you in Okay, it's pretty full. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing with that um, actually is to, we're, we're adding a context property, which will mean that you'd have access to, say, your content item inside the short code. Um, and I, th I think we'll probably have some kind of default cont contextualizer, which will provide some other things like a service provider and what have you. Like um, and maybe yeah. Yeah, like that thing. Um, so just an interface to implement, um, and it will automatically um, become in the context. Yeah, I think this way is a better. It's, so it's context is just a dictionary. In GraphQL, they have the same issue, and what we did is that well, they have a base object that you can inherit from, and you can add custom properties. But in your lambdas, then you have to cast this to this custom object, and it has to match, right? So here, I think it's better because this way you can pass different properties based on different usage of the shortcodes and where you call it. Uh, and you can also check if the property is available. It's just like a dictionary. So I think it's, I think it's uh, more flexible. Um, and there is one object, which is context object. And I love this syntax. I used it also for other things where you can initialize a, a dictionary-like object. As long as your object has an indexer on a string, then you can use this syntax. 
Um, so that's nice. Um, yeah, so that's the way you pass a custom context. I didn't see that in the code, and I understand I didn't merge this PR. Ah, what was, what did I merge before that, you asked me? Uh, case and sensitivity for... Um... Yeah, so in your example, I was wondering, because you had, uh, you were saying, you are, you are, you're, you're not sure if it has to be lowercase or uppercase, and you had one, when you injected the tag, there was the opening tag, which was uppercase, and the end tag, which was lowercase. Does it work in that case? Do the... Um, yeah, no, it does. Um, what I need to do is is just go with lowercase naming on the templates, um, because by default, they can um, okay. they can go uppercase, um, but it works. And just some other feedback in the, the model that you pass to Liquid. I saw args and content. Uh, I will put them in lowercase. Oh, okay. Uh, and liquid. Content. Yeah, because in liquid, everything by default is lowercase, and the words are separated by uh, underscores, if they are uh, complex words. It's not like camel casing. Came, how, how do they call that? It's not came up case, but with underscores. In case you, you have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, um, but I was just using them in, on the basis of how we'd used model dot content item and liquid and, and yeah. content item and but if not required mm, yes probably for consistency because we pass a lot of view models that are shared with razor and things like this but in this case um, it's it's a custom feature and you know the custom model you will pass to this custom feature for liquid so i i it, it seems nicer to the eye to me. But if people have other opinions, just I'm just a voice. I should mute myself and let others say. Just my feedback. Then, um, then what else? A nice pop up. Categories. You will need um, what did everyone think of the hints? Uh, I think that's good to have hints to explain what it does. Call it hints or description or whatever. Because when you I don't know what they do in in, in, the, in the screenshot that you shared with uh, the short codes on WordPress, the one on the issue, which on which I will be able to find it. Um, what I was kind of thinking of doing is rather than providing any short codes other than the image one in code, um, that we might just add. Um, some short codes via templates to some of the recipes um, just to get people started and then they can just write their own, which kind of gets us around the localization problem of um, hint text um, because we wouldn't need to localize the, the stuff going into recipes um, because they are just examples. Mm. You see here, so every time there is a text here, I'm not sure it's available in the if it's available on the, the pop-up, but ah, that's nice to see what it does because when you just see that, you don't know what it does. You need the text to explain that. Does it have to be localized? Uh, does it have to be a localized string? Uh, I'd say yes. If it's by code, you should provide a localized string so people can localize it because it means that we, sh we ship some default stuff, so we have to localize it. Yeah, what I was saying is I was thinking of not supplying any by code um, and just supplying them via a recipe um, and a, a template snippet because then they're just editable and people can localize them as they as they need to. You will always want people to be able to provide one by code because some will have to be by code. Uh, yeah, maybe a small few by code. Um, and the those ones, ones by, localized, yeah, yeah. The ones by code, you have to pass a localized string. And the yeah, ones exactly. by, code, by code, it will be a string that will be used, that will be localized using the dynamic localization feature. Exactly. Um, yeah, if um, the pop-up was more like the WordPress one, which is showing all in the columns, you could have the categories at tabs, like with all 
do exactly what we do for uh, the workflow items, which is like a, like a categories on the left. And then when you click a category, you have the list on the right. If it's a reusable pop-up. Maybe easier to navigate than the list that you, you did. In the same way that when you look at the tokens from what you want, it's a flat list and categories is helping, but it's still flat, super long to read. So, but just something that can be improved later. It's, it's independent. Uh, that's good. Looks good. I would have loved your demo to use the preview thing. So while while you type these short codes, you can see directly what they what they render, and it should be super fast, faster than Razor actually to render. So. Uh, that would have been nice. That's, an, that's another. That sounds like another feature as well. No, it, I mean the preview thing. It's just a preview content item. Just open the preview and edit the short codes while you see the rendering on the right. Just a, uh, a demo aspect. Because you typed lots, lots of short codes, and then we saw the result. Instead of seeing it live. True, true. Uh, and and missing the code mirror. And the editors for liquid and for well, just for liquid, but that's just a minor thing to add later. Uh, that's good. That's good. Good job. Uh, questions, comments. Okay, now you need to make a PR for Chain 1 to replace tokens by shortcuts. Have you looked at what we can do in Orchard 1 that we will not be able to do with shortcuts in Orchard Core, even in terms of extensibility? Like all the chain. I, ha ha I haven't had an extensive review. I mean, there was a lot of chaining there. Um, yeah. But as I went through it, I, I really realized, and I think Antoine agreed, um, that the places where we used tokens in a very complex way in Orchard 1 tended to be things like workflows um, and places where we currently have liquid. Yeah, right. Um, and liquid's really powerful for that and is, is probably the right thing to use. Um, whereas short codes are much more targeted at producing small snippets of information. So tokens being something that is supposed to be simple, but also allow for a lot of flexibility, is now more flexible in our chip core using liquid. And then we have short codes to do the simple things. So there is a there is a gap here, but I think that's good. Like short codes for editors and liquid for devs. I think that's good. That, that's my thinking, because liquid will never be discoverable. Um, and the way that short codes can be easily made discoverable, and so therefore editors um, and the, the things like you know things like the auto root slug, for example, would, will always be liquid. Antoine says he prefers the old syntax uh, for dictionary initializers. No. When you say old, I mean I don't even remember we can. Yes, I, I don't even remember we can do that. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. That's always been very yeah. Cool. As far so, as I can remember. So Ashima can still use it, right? Yeah, you can still use it. Instead uh, of this. So one one case where I where I see the new syntax being uh, really useful is when you have a class that derives from a dictionary and that has some additional properties that you want to be able to initialize. I think you can then mix, I see. mix the, I the see. property initialization and and. Uh, uh, dictionary element initialization in one single instruction, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I need to check if I can use this syntax instead. It's better. Just, just geeking out about languages here. <laughs> um, can we add current context info like type ID, short code arguments? That's a good question. Here, it's entering the realm of liquid example. So yeah. I was planning to include the um, the content item, the current content item that's being worked on as a 
No, no, that's not the question. In the context. That's not the question. I think there is a, there is an issue here. <laughs> that's not the question. That might be a problem. Let's say you want, you have the bold short code, okay? It takes some content. You want the title of the content item to be bold. What do you do? In that case, you need to be passing the short code in the title field. Um, but uh, equally, we don't render. So this is so this is one of the things I was talking about: the difference between HTML short codes and, and text short codes. Um, an HTML short code could render um, a bold title um, or a bold piece of text in an HTML editor, um, but it could never do that in a in a text field or in a title field because they're not HTML fields; they're only text fields, and would never okay. render HTML. But yeah, but let's say I'm, well, that's more templating. Okay, that's different. So here, uh, so here is, I have, a, I have an answer, but I also have a different answer, which is don't do that. You. <sighs> uh, I, I won't if, if you say, but just ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's, let's see. Um, I'm trying to, yeah. So imagine I'm in, I'm editing a blog post and I have a markdown body. And in the modern body, I can use shortcodes, but not liquid. That's what we do. So I can inject a link to a tweet because I can use a Twitter shortcode and pass the ID of a tweet and it will render the HTML for the tweet. But now I want to render, yeah, it's the body. So in the body, if you want to use some data from the content item, we would need some dedicated shortcodes like a content item title shortcode that could use a context to extract the, the title of the but that's more like now templating which is what liquid can do and um and actually i would not do that because you don't want in your body to reuse the title or i would expect you don't want in your body to use title or to use something else that's more about the template of the blog post itself to that and not the content editor. But otherwise it can be solved, technically it could be solved with um, custom shortcodes that would be able to fetch content from the current content item. And then you can pass this shortcode as the content of another shortcode. Uh, you could even create a dynamically in the shortcode templates that Dean showed using liquid. Maybe you would be able to extract the current content item from the context and then a custom property, even if the custom property is provided as an argument to the shortcode. So you could have a shortcode called content item property that has an argument which can be title, uh, text field dot value, things like this, but that's going to far away and maybe breaking the sanitization issue. Sure. But I'm sure people will ask that. Oh, I want to inject using shortcode something and I will, we will have to say, no, nope, use liquid. That's the gap. When do you start using shortcodes and start using liquid? For content editor, they should not have to do things like this. Just write content and have some shortcodes to help them generate some HTML. If you have more examples of things that you want your editors to, to do from the content, yeah, please share them because you have any experience in that. Okay. No questions, comments? All good. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Still here. Good. Okay. So. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I will see you on Thursday or next Tuesday. Bye-bye, everyone.